Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here and today we're gonna be going over some males OD. This was an absolute stomp of a match where Team Secret <laughs> <laughs> took down Alliance in a game that was 14 to 1. Samel went 6 0 and 5, had an insanely high net worth, went Midas, and so I want to cover his item decisions, his gameplay, so that you can implement it into your games as well. Now, if you guys have been following the channel, you know that I think OD is a low skill hero. It's my least favorite hero in the game. It's like that in Slark. Honestly, I like playing Slark, so at least there's that. I don't like playing against Slark, <laughs> but I, I just hate OD, dude. I hate this hero. It's so stupid in lane, but nonetheless, you gotta know why it's stupid in lane, so let's talk about it. By the way, guys, if you want to become absolutely broken, well, what you need to do is sign up to the Game Leap website down below right now. The reason why you should do that is because every single day we post a new video there. Content that you simply just will never get on YouTube, we post every single day to the website. It's really top tier stuff. I'm very proud of what I make over there. We also have other creators, many of my great friends who are top tier Dota players, creating guides about different heroes, different roles, different items, skill builds, talent builds, everything you need to know to get to the next rank. So if you feel a little bit lost, you're a little bit stuck, click the link down below. I'll see you guys there. And now let's get into the video. Okay, so first things first, just a quick reminder of Odie's base stats. He has 62 base damage, quite high. Well, it's a little bit lower, you know, with the branches and shit. Then he has seven armor and 320 movement speed. Really, really good numbers. And so this hero naturally is just gonna lane well regardless of whether or not it has spells. Now, the way you wanna use Astral is very simple. Early on, if you're against a ranged hero, it's gonna be very hard to Astral the ranged hero. So more often than not, what you can do is actually Astral melee creeps, Astral the range creep, and secure them that. However, if you're against a melee hero, or the ranged heroes are out of position, then what you can do is astral them and use it to get the first deny of the wave every single time. Following that up against these melee heroes, which by the way guys, if you want free MMR, just pick OD into these like melee mids. The reality is you're gonna stomp them because if you watch this last 20 seconds, you're gonna see why the lane is just so hard for Void Spirit. Every single time when Samael hits level two and has the opportunity, he's gonna hit the Void Spirit with his Q. There's two reasons why this is important. Number one, it does a shit ton of damage. Number two, it doesn't draw creep aggro. And so essentially against these melee heroes, you have an easy way, similar to a Viper, to pressure them without taking damage yourself. This adds up very quickly. It might not seem like it, it might, you might not even realize it, but it does. As you consistently Astral spam them and Q spam them, eventually they're gonna take so much damage that they can't lane. On top of that, his E was massively buffed. It was one of the biggest buffs in Dota, like as of late, I'm not kidding guys. Essence Flux, Mana Restore was increased by 10% at every single level, including level one. That is a 50% increase on the amount of mana you get back at level one Essence Flux. And so this hero just became a significantly better laner. And you can see, the gameplay is very simple. Contest creeps when there's creeps to contest, pretty standard. Obviously, you know, you, you can astral. Even in this scenario, maybe he could astral, gotten two denies. And then every single time you have the opportunity to go for your Q, you Q. Once again, against ranged heroes, you can't really play like this. Against ranged heroes, you wanna be a bit more defensive and let them come to you because OD has very bad attack range. He has actually some of the worst attack range in the game for a ranged hero at 450. So you do not want to walk into the enemy and take bad trades. And the stupid thing about this matchup is once you get further enough ahead against any of these low range heroes, Storms, Embers, Void Spirit, you know, whatever you're laning against mid, that can't fight back, you can unironically walk onto their high ground because once again, the Q does not draw aggro. As you'll see there, he hits the Void Spirit, none of the creeps turn towards him, and he can completely zone this guy off the wave. Literally completely zones him off the wave. All right, the next important thing we, we should talk about is the Meteor Hammer combo. So I didn't cover starting items, but what he went was branches and a crown. That's it, that's all you need to know. He didn't even start tangos, which is kind of crazy, but he just knew that this matchup is super easy, so he greeted out and rushed the Ring of Health. You can do that as well. But if you're against a ranged hero, I recommend you be a bit more careful and you exchange to the branches for tangos instead. Moving on, he then went Ring of Health, and after that, when you finally get to your Meteor Hammer, all you need to do is time the Astral with the Meteor Hammer. Now the thing is he gets it really early on into the lane and so he has to time it a bit different. Uh, basically what I've noticed here is that 
If you have three points in Astral, you can't just Astral into Meteor Hammer. That's what he tries to do here. You have to do it slightly late, right? When it's maxed out, you can do it a little bit. Like, it's kind of like a timing thing. And so what you need to know is that Astral has a duration of 4 seconds and Meteor Hammer has a channel time of 2.5 and a landing time of 0.5, which means there's a 1 second gap where you do not want to cast Meteor Hammer. However, at level, obviously at level 3, it's almost instant. There's a 0.25 second gap. Unfortunately, he didn't wait for this 0.25 second gap, so he just completely misses. But if you do happen to get your Meteor Hammer this early, <laughs> right, this is a ridiculously early Meteor Hammer at minute six, uh, then you do have to keep that in mind. It's pretty important. Now, the next thing to understand about this combo is that it's really low committal. The scariest part about OD is this Meteor Hammer timing. Most heroes, frankly, can't lane mid once OD hits this timing. If you think I'm kidding, I'm not. I'm not kidding, it is this good. As he, he sets up the combo, he drops it onto the to the Void Spirit. Void Spirit's cast points were actually nerfed as of late, so I think he would have gotten hit by it even in the previous patches, but nonetheless, he gets hit by the Meteor Hammer and you don't even have to kill the person, right? You don't, like he just hits him with the Meteor Hammer. This guy's done, right? He's just out of lane because Meteor Hammer does an insane amount of damage. It's like 300 damage, 400 damage. And these heroes can't tank that in the early game. Astral plus Meteor Hammer is usually about two thirds of most heroes HP. So the next thing on a, on a bit of a weird timing, but it, it was off a of smoke gank, so I guess I, I, that's the idea here. He pops a smoke gank with his Rubik, and they want to rotate to the bottom side of the map. They know for a fact that they can kill anyone who they run into. Now, unfortunately, uh, Nico Baby has the very good reaction time not to get caught here. So well played by Nico Baby, but he decides to actually go back bottom and stay bottom. This might seem a little bit weird because generally with OD, what you want to do is you just want to hit ridiculous timings. The most standard gameplay for this hero is undoubtedly just to stay mid, Meteor Hammer mid wave. If there's an enemy, Meteor Hammer them, right? And then kill the small camp, then kill mid wave, then kill the small camp, then mid wave, and then eventually even ancients as your Q scales up in levels, it's actually quite good for killing ancients. However, what he does this game is a little bit different and I have a theory on why. The biggest theory on why I, I think it makes sense that he actually gives up mid this game is just to give Puppy mid. It's very important to understand that level 6 spikes on your supports are basically just as important as your own farm, as they will later enable your farm even more, whether or not it's setting up a kill with Fiend's grip, or just winning a fight completely detached from you just to create space. And so yeah, it's very easy to take towers with Meteor Hammer. If you guys watch my stream, you know I love this item, and this is honestly the main reason. The amount of damage it does to towers is just unparalleled. It really is a ridiculous item, as it also stuns the tower and buys time. So the next thing to mention about OD is you don't actually want to rotate onto the enemy side of the map very much. It's important to understand in Dota, like as a whole, if you guys are trying to get better, you don't want to play heroes like OD, play heroes like Medusa on the enemy side of the map very much. Now, just before this clip, he went and took the bottom tier one tower. However, it was cleared out. There wasn't a fight that was going to happen. And even if there was, he had multiple teammates ready to take that engagement, right? He had a Mars with ultimate. He had a Rubik, right? They were ready to go. But in general, with these slow heroes, right? These the, I mean, OD has decent base movement speed, but he doesn't buy any more movement speed. He doesn't have a mobility spell. You don't want to get caught out on the enemy side of the map. So as I show you this next clip here, what you want to understand is that this is the optimal play. So what he does is he shifts up to the top side of the map. This is perfect because it's very unlikely he gets ganked. He has a war to cover any potential counter ganks. And so, yeah, that's exactly what you want on your side of the map. And you know if the enemy team's going to come. On top of that, he's ganking a Tide Hunter, which is honestly a very good matchup for OD. Just the fact that you do pure damage against Kraken Shell is very nice. And yeah, eventually they're able to take down this Tide. It does seem like a very risky play, but at the point of this game, they were very far ahead and they knew that the enemy team was dodging them. They had a Weaver farming bottom, Luna farming mid, Void Spirit also showed mid, and so they were very comfortable making that dive. Very important to know, right? Because once again, OD doesn't have a good, a great way. He has Astral, but he doesn't have a great way from getting away from a lot of ganks, and so you generally want to stick on your side of the map. After he shoves in top, he doesn't push this top tier one, he goes back through his jungle, plays it safe, gets his Midas off, and even shifts back over to mid to potentially take an engagement. This is a good play to make, right? Once again, it's on your side of the map. This is one of those engagements where you're going to be able to potentially get off your Meteor Hammer combo because your team can back you up. You're going to be able to get off a lot of autos. and uh, It's just kind of like the optimal engagement for OD, and this is what you want to look for. So he leads him with the Astral. Honestly, not too great here. A little bit risky. Even gets hit by a bug, which is 
actually a very bad thing for OD. Uh, your bad attack speed usually kind of screws you with that, but he was fine here, and they end up cleaning up the tide. You can see you just want to kite back. In between every auto, because the entirety of the enemy team is alive, he wants to keep a very safe distance of about seven to 800 units, which is going to allow him to just stay out of your general spell cast range, and this causes him to once again stay in position and eventually get off a really nice ulti that kills off the Luna. And what I would say is one of the most ridiculous aspects of Odie as a hero is his ability to Roshan. Yeah, I, I know, it's like, it's like, what doesn't this hero do? It's a good laner, right? It's a good laner. It roams fairly well because it takes Meteor Hammer and, and takes your towers. And it Roshans, it's like, wh really, what doesn't this hero do? It's just, it kind of just does everything right now. The only thing it doesn't do that well is like split push and play very, very high tempo. So that's something to keep in mind when you have OD one other disables, Bane, Mars, Rubik, right? Seeker's Draft is very well rounded here. But yeah, look at the damage to Roshan. It's because once again, the fact that they changed that your Q could hit Rosh, it used to not be able to. In old patches, it couldn't. Now it can and your E is buffed, right? So you get more mana back every time it procs. 30% of the time, you get 30% of your mana back. And how OD's Q works is your mana pool, right? Your mana pool, not your max mana. Your current mana is how much damage your Q does, which is why this buff was so freaking massive. Because even though it's only quote unquote 10% more, and you might be like, oh, it's only 10%, that's 10%, right? Like extra damage on your Q as well. That's gonna help you Roshan. That's gonna help you farm, do damage, etc., etc., etc. Which is why it's such a crazy buff on top of that yeah he's just able to take down roshan get his troll aegis and after that you can imagine what he's gonna do he's gonna static out the game go back to farming and wait for his team to make a play he's not just gonna walk up to the mid tier one he's not just gonna kill himself and do that like a lot of you guys would <laughs> he's gonna play it safe reset the game just get his midas off which i don't know why he didn't use there but you get the point enemy team invades takes a fight you can see the gist of what they're going for here has Samel invaded the enemy side of the map? They are 5k ahead, okay? You guys know how, like, in, in your pubs when you get ahead, your whole team is like, push, 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 run down the lanes. Look how many towers Secret has. One! Because that's not what their team does, okay? That's not what they do. If they run into, into Alliance, you know what's gonna happen? They're gonna run into Eclipse, Ravage, Swarm, and Void Spear Spells. They're gonna feed, right? Because they're gonna get isolated. It's not what you want. Obviously, in this scenario, there's no way they get isolated because they're five men in their triangle. In fact, the Void Spirit gets isolated and they win another fight. So let's get into why Samel actually goes for Hurricane Pike this game. The biggest thing I would say that this item does is it allows him to play around Tidehunter. Now, honestly, the active of a Hurricane Pike is more than enough to justify the item on this hero. I actually think the active of Hurricane Pike is one of the most underused, you know, item abilities in the game. The fact that it gives you bonus attack speed and then basically max range is insane, right? It gives you five extra attacks at 100 attack speed. So you just like chunk people down. It, it's pretty nuts. Um, so that's one thing I hope to see him use within this replay, but basically it's really good against Tide because Tide is one of those heroes where in order to get the best Ravage possible, it's actually not what most people think. Most people think, oh, in order to get the best Ravage possible, you have to blink and catch them off guard and, and catch them when they're three, four, five heroes. Not really. The best Ravage possible is almost always based around Tidehunter getting gone on or the enemy team over committing and then you counter initiate. The reason why that's better than catching the enemy team off guard in most scenarios is because when they go on you first and then you ravage, they're going to be so far towards your team that your team can easily react to the ravage and actually follow up the stun duration. Most 3k, 4k, 2k, 1k time hunters ravage in a way that actually causes them to just have no follow up. And they're like, I hit a three, four man ravage. Where's my team? Oh my God, I hate Smurfs. And it's... <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah so the reason why the pike is good on od against tide is because you threaten tide really hard right so tide can't just man up the od i mean he can't like kite od very well it's not one of those heroes tide can ignore and you keep such a range that it makes it very awkward for him to try to ravage you because if he does a lot of the time you can just react with your four staff because ravage is kind of slow and it's just going to make it where a lot of time he'll get only a one-man ravage which is not great as well all right, and uh, for our last clip of the game, because Alliance calls GG, I actually really want to see Alliance win a uh, series. I'm rooting for them. I, I hope they can turn it around. I, I actually think they will. But um, nonetheless, as we'll see in this top clip here, 
Uh, he's going to set up onto the Void Spirit, actually gets the timing perfect there, really well done. Perfect timing on the Meteor Hammer, gets jumped, and really good job uh, on, on the Force Staff. Basically, you can see the gist of like how these fights work. He knows for a fact Void Spirit isn't going to kill him, but if Void Spirit is going on him here, what does that mean? Right, what does that mean? It means his team's behind them, okay? At this level, if someone double jumps like this, it means their team's behind them. If it's your games, I don't know, maybe they're just stupid. But, <laughs> but like, the reality is like, there's, you know, even if this is your average pub, there's probably people behind them. And, and yeah, you want to react to that. You want to make sure the enemy team has to go in as far as possible because they have to overextend so far. Look at Nico Baby's positioning on the Luna. Just co completely gets caught out by the by the troll. And that's not really what you want. <laughs> Manning up the troll as, as Luna. It's not that good. I can assure you. It's not. It's really not that good. And they just completely die. So even though he ends up really not killing anyone in this fight besides the Abaddon, it's still a very well-performed fight by Samel. And uh, yeah, I don't know why he's bots. I think this is him just saying, hey, we're so far ahead. If the enemy team has any way back into this game, it's split pushing. And so he goes bots. And uh, yeah, they call GG. But this happens a lot with OD. Like, frankly, when you, when you have an OD on your team against a Void Spirit or an Ember, like either the Ember gets away with the lane, like they outplay the OD or the OD sucks. And then they just kind of win the mid game because OD's slow. Or the games look like this, where it's like the Void Spirit just wants to give up. <laughs> Because let's look at the graphs real quick. If we look at the graph in minute 10, I mean, it's just a beat down. A thousand net worth. Yeah, thousand. You know, that's it's not so good. I can assure you that's not that's not what you want. And it only gets worse from there because the Meteor Hammer and Midas really allows you to farm very quickly. You can have a very simple game plan, right? A simple play style. And yeah, as you can see, the net worth starting to grow and grow. 1400 net worth, 1300, and then eventually it even gets to 2k here. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one and I'm out. Peace. And that's all. But remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below and I'm out. Peace.